Batteries have come a long way since the good old days when mercury was considered medicine, wireless electricity to power airplanes was a thing, and the first lead acid batteries ruled the world, which funny enough, had an energy density of less than 40 watt hour per liter. But since its invention in 1859, batteries were never a big hit. They even tried to use it with electric cars at the time, but these batteries weren't powerful enough to do anything with it. It would take 120 years for batteries to get somewhere when during the 1970s and 80s, lithium-ion technology was in the works by John Goodenough, Stanley Whittingham, Rashid Yazami, and Yakira Yoshino. But the early lithium batteries were famous for a few problems, ranging from losing capacity with a short period of time to bursting into flames. Let me put it this way, they weren't as reliable as they are today. In 1991, lithium-ion batteries started to be commercialized by Sony, which was one of the first companies to have this technology, and at this point in time, the energy density increased only a little, or from about 40 watt-hour per liter to about 190. 30 years later, and Samsung is close to finalizing its research towards an all-solid-state battery, which delivers an unprecedented 900 watt per liter, and a minimum lifetime of a thousand cycles. Hold on to your lunches, my dear viewers, because things are about to get interesting. Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. Lithium is by far the best candidate for high energy density batteries. Not only is it abundant in nature, but in theory, its energy density of 6,389 watt hour per liter can surpass that of gasoline. Just to give you an idea, the energy density provided by gasoline is at current, or at the making of this video, about 15.8 times more energy dense than batteries, or 9,500 watt hour per liter compared to lithium ion batteries ranging from 250 to 600. Of course, if you take into account that gasoline combustion cycle is less efficient, such that for every liter you burn, you get at most 40% of that energy, then the difference drops to about 6.3 times. But let's go with that, assuming efficiency to be around 40%. Side by side, we can easily see why interest in batteries increased so much in the past decade. What this means is that if we could reach the full potential of lithium-ion batteries, the range per charge for Model 3, for instance, would be multiplied by almost 10, or from 518 kilometers to 5,000 kilometers in one charge. What it also means is that instead of having 6 to 8,000 batteries, we could have cars with only 1 to 2,000 batteries with a range of 1,000 kilometers, if not more. Not only that, but decreasing the number of batteries makes it safer, charges faster, and is more environmentally friendly. But that is only possible with solid-state batteries, and we all know that there are mainly two problems with them. The first one is dendrites, which causes volume expansion, ultimately causing the battery to fail or even burst. Then we have the low coulombic efficiency, which causes the battery to degrade faster, having a lower life cycle. And let's not even enter the discussion of how complicated it is to work with lithium. Any contact with oxygen, hugs and kisses to your right hand. What Samsung claims to have achieved is the end of all of that. Their recent article in Nature explains how they created a battery with 900 watt hour per liter and a thousand cycles. This represents a 50% improvement in terms of energy density, while more than 200% of battery life cycle. How they achieve this is fascinating. Samsung research was led by Young Gung Li for an all-solid state battery. Their goal was to eliminate dendrites formation and increase coulombic efficiency. To do that, they sandwiched layers of lithium nickel cobalt manganese oxide mixed with a sulfide solid electrolyte on top of a nanocomposite layer of silver carbon. All of this is located in between a foil of aluminum and stainless steel as the current collectors. The idea behind this was to remove lithium foil from the mix and have all lithium atoms part of the NMC or the SSE. This approach diminishes the cost of the overall battery manufacturing since handling lithium usually needs an oxygen-free environment due to its higher reactivity. This is important for a few reasons. In conventional lithium batteries, 
the anode comprised of lithium moves freely towards the positive electrode during discharge. Dendrites are formed during the charging process, when lithium moves back to its initial location thanks to the free movement enabled by liquid or gel electrolyte. This is the main limiting factor of how much energy can be stored in these batteries, since to control this, the amount of lithium available in the system has to be capped, limiting the energy density. The sulfide solid electrolyte approach guides lithium back and forth with a little help from silver, in a uniform manner allowing the atom to be deposited in flat layers with little to no chance of dendrites forming. Nice, right? But Samsung took this idea a step further. Most solid-state battery technologies proposed to date have some sort of nanomatrix layer compound, like silica for instance, that is used to absorb lithium ions. By removing this layer and having only silver atoms playing the part of the matrix to guide the ions, you can effectively introduce more cathode into the mix, increasing the overall energy density of the battery, or 900 plus watt-hours per liter. This approach also increases battery lifetime efficiency by 200%. In this scenario, all lithium in the system is allocated within the NMC molecules, comprising the cathode of the system. Here, there is no anode, and the stainless steel sheet works as the current collector to drive the reaction. So, the battery is initially in a discharged state. When the battery is being charged, lithium ions pass through the carbon layer attaching themselves to silver atoms. This in turn promotes a better connection of the lithium layer onto the stainless steel current collector. What you get in the end is a clean sheet of lithium silver free of dendrites. This cycle can be repeated more than a thousand times flawlessly. Samsung solved many problems here, but one of them stands out and that is the construction of the battery. By having only the NMC cathode embedded into a solid electrolyte and separated by the nanolayer of silver carbon, it eliminates the need for oxygen-free environment necessary for the construction of the battery, ultimately reducing cost. Although this is a huge gain, the impact on price for these new batteries is yet to be seen, but we know for sure that at least 35% of the final cost is due to manufacturing overhead, which includes energy costs, research and development, production, sales, and so on. Then we have the remaining costs attributed to materials alone, comprising 60% of the final price. As I mentioned in an older video of mine, cobalt and nickel are to blame, since prices are increasing due to the high demand for these elements, hence why most companies are trying to move away from these elements. But it's safe to assume that Samsung may have used NMC here just to test the concept and acquire real-world numbers from this first prototype. At this point, it's still unclear where Samsung intends to use these batteries, but one thing is for sure, they still need more research and development so they can get rid of the nickel and cobalt. If they achieve this, then they will have the triple crown breakthrough. Cheap elements, high energy density, and a long lifetime cycle. And that is when we'll finally have a dramatic drop in battery prices. Overall, this is a huge step forward for solid-state batteries, and we can safely say that we are closer and closer to an electric future. Alright folks, that's it, we're done here.